Hare Krishna. I hope all of you all had a very beautiful and a very blissful Janmashtami. Uh, today, I am going to be sharing with all of you some really beautiful thoughts on um, Sri Krishna Janmashtami. Uh, and uh, just to help us meditate on um, Lord Krishna and uh, the whole mood of Janmashtami once again. <clears throat> so, um, for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to be just sharing one after another different thoughts on, uh, on Lord Krishna and hopefully these thoughts will help you in your uh, spiritual lives and it will help you meditate on uh, on Krishna a little better. And it will also help you understand Krishna a little better. There are three words. Bhakta, Bhakti and Bhagavan. Bhakta means servant of Krishna. Bhakti means service to Krishna. And Bhagavan means Sevya Vastu. That means the object of service. Uh, they are these three words Bhakti, Bhakta and Bhagavan all the three are derived from the same root word Bhaja and the word Bhaja means to serve so all the three are essentially about service Bhakta is a servant of Krishna Bhakti means service to Krishna and Bhagavan means the object of service. Krishna Bhakti is the duty of the Jiva, of the living entity. And Krishna Prem is the goal of the Jiva. And therefore, whatever we do in our lives, we have to see if it is reaching, actually helping us reach that goal and achieve that goal. Krishna appears in Vrindavan um, in four very specific forms. And this, what, what I'm going to share with you, these four forms in which Krishna appears in Vrindavan, he doesn't appear anywhere else. He only appears in Vrindavan in these four forms. And what are these? Gopave, Gopavesha, Venukara, Navakishora, and Natavara. These are the four aspects of Krishna that you will only see in Vrindavan. Gopavesha. That means Krishna dresses himself as a cowherd boy. Never anywhere else in the universe you will find Krishna dressed as a cowherd boy. Only in Vrindavan. Venukara, Krishna holding a flute. You will not find Krishna holding a flute in Kurukshetra. You will not find Krishna holding a flute in Mathura. Nor in Dwaraka. Nor anywhere else in the world. The only place where Krishna holds a flute is Vrindavan. And Navakishora. In Vrindavan, Krishna is an eternal 16-year-old boy. He doesn't age beyond that. And he always appears as Navakishore in Vrindavan. And the fourth is Natavara. When Krishna walks in Vrindavan, it's a dance. When Krishna dances in Vrindavan, it's a dance. But even when Krishna simply walks in Vrindavan, it looks like a dance and therefore this very very beautiful aspect of Vrindavan is something that is very special it is said in Vrindavan um, every word is a song and every walk is a dance um, in Vrindavan the whole mood is a mood of celebration every single thing that happens in Vrindavan is in connection with Krishna and every single thing that happens in Vrindavan is a very joyful experience. Uh, that is a beautiful form of uh, Kishore Krishna, a youthful coward boy, bent in three places and holding a flute in his hand. This is typically how Krishna lives and exists in Vrindavan. Uh, Navakishora means Nitya Kishore. He is always around. 
it's not exactly 16 it is considered to be 10 to 12 years of age basically you know and he never goes older than that at every moment krishna appears newer and newer and newer nityam nava navyamanam what is the meaning of nityam nava navyamanam it means that he is never the same he never becomes old in fact, every moment Krishna looks different. Obviously, for you and me, we can't understand this because we look the same. And you know, if you look at us five years down the line, six years down, nothing much changes actually, you know. But for Krishna, when you look at Krishna every moment, you it seems that wow, I never seen this aspect of him. It's like there is a fresh newness in Krishna every moment. And therefore, uh, he is called Nitya Nava Nava uh, Navya Manam. He is never the same, and he never becomes old. Venukara means he has a flute in his hand. The flute is not in Mathura Dwarka; it is only in Vrindavan, because in Vrindavan, Krishna is Madhuryaka Nilaya. That means he is the reservoir of Madhurya. Just to give you an example of what this whole thing is. Suppose a man meets, uh, suppose a man is walking on the street and he meets some old friends, old acquaintances. How does he speak to them? How does he greet them? Obviously, if you meet some old acquaintances, you are a little, you know, formal and not so close to them, right? It's just like a little bit. Uh, you will uh, you'll show some uh, courtesy and you'll smile and you'll ask how are you and courteous things. But a man who goes to the office and with his co-workers all the time that he's working along with, obviously the man will be a little more open because they know them every day they meet. Mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's a little class, casual dealing also and uh, a little more intimacy. But of course, the intimacy is not as much as a man who is at home. With his family, isn't it? Man who's at home with his family, he is totally comfortable. He can be with whatever clothes he wants. He can be with, you know, uh, in whatever way he wants. He doesn't have to comb his hair. He doesn't have to really worry about how he looks. With his family, he is himself. Krishna in Dwarka is in the mood of a man who has met his acquaintances on the street. A little, uh, sorry, the Krishna Mathura is in the form of a man who has met his acquaintances. He's just reached Mathura, so he's kind of making uh, connections. Krishna in Dwarka is a little more, uh, you know, freer. So that's his office, where he is pe with people that he works with. They know him very well. They're all close to him like that. But Krishna Vrindavan, he's at home. And when he is at home, he dresses the way he wants to dress. Uh, and therefore, you'll find Krishna in Vrindavan dresses only with forest leaves and flowers and fruits. In Dwarka, he's a little gorgeously dressed. In Mathura, he's quite gorgeously dressed. But in Vrindavan, he is dressed in fruits and flowers and leaves. <laughs> he is at home totally. Krishna is an expert in stealing stuff. In the childhood pastimes of Krishna, when he was the age of two to three, Krishna would steal butter of the gopis. The gopis would go and complain to Mother Yashoda all the time, saying that you know, Krishna ate butter. And Krishna would tell his mother very innocently. So his mother would ask him, Krishna, did you steal and eat butter? Krishna would say very, very innocently, Oh, Maya. I never ate makhan. And Yashoda would say, Oh, Krishna, you're saying you didn't eat butter. How come there is butter on your face? But are you telling lies? Krishna would say, No, 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 I am not telling lies. These people, they smeared butter on my face. They, they smeared makhan on, on my mouth. So now the question is, Acharya is asking, do you think Gopal tells a lie? Do you think Krishna lies? The answer is Krishna never lies. 
but the trick is in how he speaks the acharya say that when krishna is saying oh maya me nahi makhan gayo he actually means oh maya maine hi makhan khayo so that maine me nahi and maine there is a two different ways of so he saying maine hi and main main nahi so if you put me and na together it becomes maine hi and if you put me and na separately is it becomes main nahi so the acharya explained he spoke in a way that it has two meanings gopal is a very tricky guy and gopal he is so tricky that he might say something but he actually means something else many times you will find krishna speaking in such a way that it seems that he is saying something but he actually means something else when the gopis left everything and came to krishna in vrindavan in the middle of the night krishna blows a uh, blows his flute the flute of krishna is so beautiful and so melodious that everyone hears different things from his flutes when he blows his flute and he calls his cows every single cow in vrindavan hears her own name only there is a particular note on which krishna blows to call his cows back and when krishna blows that particular note every single cow hears her personal name being called by krishna himself can you imagine that you know i mean can you ever call one person and then everybody hears their own names it is not possible but krishna's flute has that magic and when krishna blows his flute in a particular note all the gopis in vrindavan every single gopi in vrindavan hears her name being called and they run out of their houses in the middle of the night the different gopis are doing different different things some of the gopis were, were serving their husbands some of the gopis were feeding their kids some of the gopis were cooking some of the gopis were taking care of their old in-laws so many things so many household duties the gopis were doing but when krishna blew his flute they dropped everything and ran the question that we have to ask all of us is that are we ready to drop all our stuff very important stuff and run when krishna krishna's call comes most of us will will postpone the call we tell krishna krishna we are busy now please call us a little later we'll finish our work and then we'll come but the gopis are not like that they just drop everything and run when krishna blows his flute so when krishna called the gopis they dropped everything and came running and after they came krishna is telling them oh why did you all come in the middle of the night this is not right you should go back to your homes you should go back to your husbands you should go back to your duties this is not right to come in the middle of the night to the forest and krishna he saying something but he means something else so gopal is a very tricky guy to understand him is not easy so if you if you look at it from only external point of view you will never understand gopal but to understand gopal you really no need to go deeper into uh, who he is the psychology of krishna the consciousness in the mood of krishna and only then you will understand him the gopis don't go back they stay there they say krishna we have given everything to you now we can't go back we have we cannot there is no u turn in our life now so just it's a one way and krishna is trying to tell them in so many ways to go back and the gopis are saying no we won't go back because they know krishna's mood they know the they know exactly what krishna wants gopal has a black face his entire body krishna is blackish in color the beauty of krishna's uh, radiance and blackness is just amazing phenomenal krishna is not black like this world you know when when we see uh, you know the blackness of this world it's it's a different type of blackness so like for example uh in this world black uh, absorbs light right absorbs heat and therefore when it is summer you should not wear black clothes because it just absorbs so much heat you become really hot but krishna's blackness is different when krishna his blackness radiates heat his blackness radiates light 
Have you ever seen black color radiate light? You will never see black color radiate light because the black colors of this world only absorb light. But Krishna's body and his Krishna's darkness is different. It radiates light. Uh, so Krishna, uh, in his dark face, white makhan looks very beautiful. Very big contrast, right? Dark face of Krishna and white makhan. I was just sharing a few days back that uh, in Udupi, in uh, Pandarpur, they have a very phenomenal uh, thing that they do. A little Gopal, Pandarpur Vithal Dev, uh, he is a full black deity. And uh, in the morning during Mangal Arati, the Pujaris mm-hmm. take a chunk of white butter and they stick it on the face of Gopal. They stick it on the face of Vithal and like a big lump of butter is on his face and he, he keeps licking it and he keeps eating it. You know, this is butter mixed with Mishri. And Krishna loves that taste. And that the combination looks so mesmerizingly beautiful. Black, uh, you know, Vithal's uh, form. And this big white chunk of butter on his on his uh, face. Mother Gopal, Mother Yashoda tells Gopal, Gopal, your intelligence, your play, your activities are all like the monkeys. And you are with so many monkeys all the time. Are you not afraid being surrounded by the monkeys? Krishna said, Mother, these monkeys have helped Lord Ram. And Ram was going to conquer Ravan and uh, and, uh, and uh, conquer Lanka. And these monkeys went through so many austerities and tribulations at that point in time. And he said, Lord Ram had no food to give them. Sometimes they did not eat for days together. Now see how they are stretching their hand and asking me for Makhan. Gopal, he gave Makhan to the monkeys because he realized all these monkeys helped me in my previous incarnation. And in my previous Leela, I didn't have anything to give them. But now I am I am the prince of Nanda Bhavan. I have so much to give them. So every day Gopal would feed the monkeys. And the monkeys loved eating from Gopal's hand. And Gopal would personally take butter and give it to every monkey in their own hand. And the monkeys would be so ecstatic eating whatever Gopal gave them. As Gopal grew older, his wickedness also grows little by little. It is said, at the age of two to three, Krishna stole butter primarily. At the age of six to ten, Krishna, which is known as Pauganda Leela, Krishna stole the garments of the gopis. At the age of 11 onwards, which is known as Kaishor Leela, Krishna stole the heart of the gopis. And as Ishwara, Krishna steals the papa of all the living entities in this world. He, he steals the papa and tapa, sin and afflictions of his devotees. This is the job profile of Krishna at different age groups. You know, at different age, this is the job that he does, basically. And therefore, Krishna is called as the supreme thief. Chog, Chauragraganyam. Krishna is called Chauragraganyam. There's a very beautiful poem uh, by Bilavanga Thakur that describes Krishna as a thief. You know, so the, in, in this poem, Bilavanga Thakur says, Bilavanga Thakur is one of the most exalted devotees of Krishna uh, who lived in Vrindavan. And we just sang his uh, Govinda Damodha Stotra just now. And like this, he has composed many poems. And one of the poems that Bilamangal Thakur has composed is known as Chaurashtakam, where there are eight verses where he is describing Krishna as a thief. And in and the first verse is so beautiful. I'll share this with you all. Braje Prasidam Navanita Chauram Gopan Gananam Chadukula Chauram Aneka Jan Marjita Papa Choram Chora Graganyam Purusham Namami Vilamangal Thakur is praying, I offer Pranam to the supreme thief, the foremost of thieves, who is famous in Vrindavan, in Vraja, as a butter thief. And he also steals the clothes of the gopis. And, and who 
for those who take shelter of him steals the sins which we have accrued over many lifetimes in one words uh you know bilumangal thakur is describing everything that krishna does uh in his life it is explained that why does krishna steal butter i'm going to give you all the logic behind all the three aspects of krishna why he does this stealing past times <clears throat> it is explained that krishna steals butter because butter is soft butter is white and butter requires hard work why is krishna attracted to butter have you ever thought why krishna is attracted to butter because of these three qualities of butter the first thing is that it requires a lot of hard work it requires a lot of churning after a lot of churning only then butter comes out if any of you all have ever churned butter you will know your hand really pains after churning butter that means uh, so what is this whole thing there is a allegorical understanding of churning of butter it is explained that krishna uh, is when when externally we are looking at butter krishna actually looking at it internally the gopis put a lot of hard work in churning butter they have to get the right right quality of milk and from that milk they have to create uh, they have to make curd which is the right quality of curd and from that curd they have to extract ghee which is again the right quality of ghee and from that ghee lot of churning that happens and then butter comes out and this other way of churning butter is from the ghee itself a lot of do month and month and month and churning hundreds for so many hours and then one lump of butter comes out that indicates that represents the effort that is needed to soften your heart the effort that is needed to make your heart soft and offerable to krishna the second thing is butter is white which means the heart has to be pure you can't just offer any heart to krishna you have to offer a heart that is pure so just like butter is white our heart has to be pure and just like butter is soft our heart has to be soft the softest butter takes the most effort and therefore to soften the heart it takes a lot of efforts and krishna goes to the house of those gopis who have the best quality butter and there he goes and steals it that means these are the gopis that have put a lot of effort in trying to soften their heart they put a lot of effort in churning the butter which is what churning all the scriptures is which is what churning all the you know uh, all our anarthas is just like in the ocean you know when when uh, the churning of the milk ocean happened the first thing that came out was poison when we start churning our hearts the first thing that will come out is halal poison all the lust anger greed envy pride illusion all of these come out and you know many people who start chanting the hari krishna maha mantra and suddenly these anarthas start coming out they get scared they say oh my god i didn't know that i had so much of anger in me i didn't know that i had so much of you know uh, lust and greed and envy in me deal with it so when the churning happens first all this uh, poison comes out we have to learn to deal with it and to help us deal with it we need the great devotee lord shiva we need the great personalities like lord shiva to help us deal with these uh, very very dangerous anarthas and after we churn the ocean and then all the poison comes out that eventually in the end nectar comes out after a lot of effort isn't it in the middle there are so many other things that come out you know um kastuba jewel comes out you know uh, lakshmi devi comes out you know so dhanvantri comes out so many things come out that means between us starting to churn and poison coming out and finally nectar coming out there are many other things that will come out the, they are those are distractions a lot of people get carried away by the distractions the moment you start chanting the holy name there will be people who will worship you there will be people who will say oh you are such a great devotee there will be people will who will you know uh, say nice things to praise you these are distractions don't be distracted by them there will be wealth coming in your way there will be position coming in your way there will be so many things coming in your way don't get distracted by them continue churning and one day after you keep churning then nectar comes out 
and the day nectar comes out that is the day krishna will come and steal it from your heart krishna is just waiting for the day when his devotee's heart becomes so soft so white and so tasty then krishna comes and steals it on one level we are thinking that krishna is a thief he's stealing butter in people's houses but on another level the acharya has explained he is actually stealing something else only there is some other stealing going on over here this is he is not just stealing of butter there is something else that is going on on a deeper level and then krishna steals as he gets older he steals the garments of the gopis and this is something else this is so beautiful it is explained what are garments the garments represent all the identities we put on ourselves the kind of clothes we wear actually say a lot about us isn't it you know the kind of clothes that we prefer to wear says a lot about how we identify ourselves when we put on suits it says something when we put on dhoti kurta it says something when we put on you know a different types of attires they, it, all of them say something when you put on t-shirts and jeans pant it says something every single type of cloth that we wear it says something about us and about our uh, the way we identify with ourselves these identities are identities that prevent us from accessing krishna completely when krishna tells the gopis if you want to come uh, he steals the garments away of the gopis and he tells come out without your garments if you want them the gopis are inside the river and they are all naked they ha- they don't have any clothes on krishna is telling come out and take your garments from me the gopis are feeling so shy they they saying krishna we don't have any clothes on how can we come out krishna saying if you want your garments come out and the gopis come out and krishna tells the gopis he doesn't just tell them to come out he tells you come out and you have, you have to fold your hands on top of your head like this the gopis are feeling so shy they trying to cover themselves with their hands and krishna is telling you to you have to fold your hands like this on top of your head and the gopis finally they said krishna we surrender to you and they fold their hands on top of their heads and completely give themselves to krishna now on an external level the, the people that understand this on an external level they think what is this why is krishna doing this is this some kind of abuse is this some kind of bad behavior on krishna not at all this is something else going on this is some other uh, you know aspect that the acharya tried to explain to us clothes represent all the identities that we have in this world that's the first thing that the clothes represent when we go to krishna we have to drop all our identities and go to krishna as pure spirit souls atmas atmas don't have any clothes on atmas don't have any identities that they they identify with atma is there's only one identity of the atma jeevar swarup hoy krishner nityadas that's all if you have any other identity krishna expects you to drop it before you come to him therefore in some temples it is written when you go to the temple you drop your slippers outside right so it is a board that is put up that says remove your footwear here and your ego and go in so when you go to a temple when you go to krishna you don't just remove your footwear the footwear represents one aspect of you that's what your ego is what we need to remove is the identity and the ego that we have and then go in and then krishna accepts you completely so when the gopis were told by krishna remove your clothes uh, you come without your clothes come naked the gopis said krishna we are yours we are not this physical body but we are spirit soul anyway krishna is parmatma within our heart he has seen us naked all the time isn't it when you go to have a bath parmatma is still inside you when you you know when you when you sleep the parmatma is inside you all day long the parmatma is inside you what is there to hide from the parmatma what is there to you know cover ourselves and show the parmatma parmatma knows inside out of you isn't it when you come in front of the lord completely naked and say my dear lord i have no identity except that i am your servant that's all that's the only identity i have that's what krishna wants the clothes also represent many layers of anarthas that we have uh, when yudhishthir maharaj went to the forest uh, after the whole mahabharat war got over the pandavas decided to retire after krishna leaves this world and when the pandavas decide to retire they give up all their clothes the royal ornaments the royal clothes the royal 
crown everything the pandavas give up and they wear very simple clothes and they walk out walk out of the of the palace indicating that the clothes represent many layers of our anarthas all the greed envy pride illusion all of these are are represented in the form of clothes giving them up simply means giving up all those illusions and going to krishna without any external illusion on you that's what the clothes represent so when krishna is stealing the garment of the gopis don't just think that he is stealing the garment of the gopis please understand there is some something else going on on a deeper level and then finally in krishna when we see that krishna stealing the hearts of the gopis that is what krishna wants to do with all of us he wants to wait till our heart is pure enough good enough tasty enough perfect enough for him to steal and even when he steals your heart he tests you a little bit and finally the last thing that krishna steals is your papa the word hari means the one who takes away what is, so the word hari means the one who takes away and what does he take away he takes away everything that is not conducive in you connecting with him he takes away your sins he takes away you know um, your material desires he takes away so many obstacles that come on your path for for you to surrender to him when we chant the holy names of the lord we intensely take shelter of lord hari he steals away all of this therefore uh, bilumangal uh, thakur is calling uh, the lord here chora graganyam purusham namami he is the topmost thief Uh, it is said that there are three aspects to krishna katha anyone in the path of bhajan should remember three things the first thing is tatva tatva means fundamental principles understand krishna in essence the second thing is tatya tatya means reality what is a real fact and the third thing is tatparya that means significance of krishna's past times what is the deeper significance behind each past time unless you understand all these three things you won't understand krishna's past times at all tatva that means understand the essence of the past time tatya means understand what is the real fact many of krishna's past times uh, people don't understand the real facts at all and they make their own conclusions understand the real facts and third is leela tatparya understand the significance of the past time on an external level there is a story going on but on an internal level there is a deeper and a beautiful connection to that story going on and that is what makes these past times so beautiful and so amazing <clears throat> it is said that uh, i'm going to share with you all a very beautiful story and i love this story and this is one of my uh, it has become one of my favorite stories of krishna it is just very recently read one time um krishna was in um, radha kund just relaxing and having a good time at that point in time uh, radharani she was at home uh, it uh, at yavat and radharani was making a very beautiful garland for lord krishna she made a very beautiful garland for krishna and she gave it to um brinda devi and she told brinda devi go and give it to krishna so brinda devi goes and she thinks who is the best person to give this garland to krishna and she thinks of a friend of krishna named subal sakha and she tells subal sakha please you go and give this garland to krishna subal sakha takes the garland and very gratefully goes and gives it to krishna and tells him who gave it who made it she tells him everything subal sakha doesn't go and say you know krishna here is a garland i got for you no he tells the source it is very important to tell the source you know of your inspiration it is very important to tell the source of your service when whenever we serve krishna it is said that whatever service we do we are doing it on behalf of our guru and therefore in deity worship we are trained that when we offer a service to krishna tell krishna krishna i am doing it on behalf of my guru that's what the training is so we can't say that krishna i am serving you no that is not parampara parampara teaches us to serve on behalf of our teachers on behalf of our guru we have our parampara so uh, subal gave this garland to krishna and krishna was so so touched by radharani's garland he started crying 
and he told subal subal i want to meet radha right now i am so disturbed i am i am not able to uh, contain myself my mind is so restless i want radha right now subal says it is 12 o'clock in the afternoon how can you meet radha now she she will never be able to come so krishna says no 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 i want radha right now you do anything get her otherwise i'll drown in the yamuna river and end my life subal sakha is known as priya narma sakha the sakha are of different levels and priya narma sakha is the highest type of sakha and krishna's one of the most priya narma sakhas of krishna is subal so subal his heart melts he says oh krishna is going to commit suicide the fact is that anybody who says i am going to commit suicide never commits suicide but subal sakha he is just so you know so so uh, touched he says no 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 the krishna don't do this i will do something and krishna uh, subal sakha goes to yavat where radharani's house is and this is lunch time and radharani's mother in law her name is jatila she is a very hefty woman uh, the interesting thing about you know krishna's past times is that there is a lot of uh, protagonists and antagonists and there are a lot of you know uh, excitement created to make the past time even more beautiful all these personalities are pure devotees of krishna let's not you know think of somebody as good and bad they're all devotees of krishna they're all pure devotees of krishna they, this is just a drama to enhance the flavor of krishna's past times just to give krishna a thrill just to give krishna a different experience so jatila is a villain of this particular story you know and jatila she is a very fat and very hefty lady and she is sitting at the entrance of the house subal reaches there and he is very scared of jatila's anger and he is very scared of jatila's comments jatila makes really rude comments sometimes you know so jatila she asks subal what are you doing here at this time subal says uh, he is like trying to find a way to meet radha but he is just not able to understand how to cross this lady jatila you know so he just makes up a story he tells jatila uh i lost my calf and i search for my calf all over vrindavan and i not able to find my calf anywhere i the only place i have not searched is inside your house can i go inside your house and search for my calf now from a logical point of view you know it's, you might say what is this if you search all over vrindavan and you not found it what is the possibility of finding inside the house jatila is too intoxicated after the lunch you know usually after lunch time the mind doesn't work so much you know so she's in that state she's like half awake and half asleep type you know and sitting on the uh, at the uh, you know in the entrance of the house so she tells him see i am very tired after lunch if you want you go inside and search that's exactly what subal wanted he ran inside the house he said thank you mother he ran inside the house and he goes and meets radharani there and he tells radharani radha you have to immediately go krishna is waiting for you at radhakund radharani says how can i go this is like such an odd time uh, what what will i tell my mother in law what will i tell at home subal says just go i will take care and subal gives her idea he tells her you wear my clothes and i'll wear your clothes <clears throat> subal and radha look very similar very very similar in their facial looks and radha immediately agrees <laughs> she wears the clothes of subal subal wears radharani's clothes and he sits inside the house and radharani is thinking you know how will i go out even if i wear your clothes you know my mother in law will identify subal says carry a calf in your hand you hold the calf in your hand and go out radharani finds one calf and she carries the calf in her hand and she walks out of the house and as she is walking out of the house jatila he says oh you found your calf radharani in the voice of subal says yes mother i found my calf and radharani leaves from uh, that house and she is so happy to be united with krishna in radha kund and in the meanwhile subal is trapped over there inside the house and he is thinking of a way to get out suddenly something phenomenal happens which he never expected <clears throat> usually during lunch time just after lunch all the gopis in vrindavan go to do surya puja together and all the gopis were going and they came to radharani's house to take her along 
and Jatila calls out loudly to Radha, who is actually Subal inside. She says, Radha, are you not going to do Surya Puja today? Immediately, Subal gets the idea. This is my chance to escape. He says, yes, mother, in the voice of Radha. And he runs out. And somehow, Jatila, she is in an intoxicated state. She is like half asleep. She doesn't look properly. And Subal runs out of, of the house and uh, in, in the dress of Radharani. And he runs and uh, reaches Radha Kund. When Krishna sees uh, Subal there in, in the dress of Radharani, he laughs so much. He is so happy. He is with Radha also. But at the same time, he sees Subal dressed as a girl. And he is so happy looking at uh, Subal. The story of Krishna meeting Radharani and Subal helping is known as Subal Milan. Every devotee of Krishna has a very special rasa with Krishna. Your rasa with Krishna will be revealed when you reach the stage of bhava. Till you reach the stage of bhava, you cannot understand what your rasa is. Uh, we all have a very unique relationship with Krishna. But what that relationship is, we will never know. But the day we reach the stage of bhava, that day you will know what is your exact relationship with Krishna. And that is a day when you will, uh, that is a day of ghosts when you are chanting offenselessly, when you are chanting purely. It is explained that uh, there are two, yeah, there are many stages of uh, developing love for God. The first stage of progression of development of love is called a rati. Rati means love, right? But that is the first stage of love. See, in English, there is such a limitation of what uh, love means. When you tell someone, I love you. How can you define how much you love that person? It is impossible to define, isn't it? Because English has such, such limitations. I'm going to tell you the Sanskrit dictionary of levels of love. And imagine what kind of levels of love exist for Krishna. The first level of love is known as Rati. When Rati becomes more condensed, it is called as Prema. When Prema becomes more condensed, it is called Sneha. When Sneha becomes even more condensed, it is called Mana. When Mana becomes even more condensed, it is called Pranaya. And when Pranaya becomes even more condensed, it is called Raga. When Raga becomes even more condensed, it is called as Anuraga. When Anuraga becomes even more condensed, it is called Bhava. And when Bhava becomes even more condensed, it is called Mahabhava. And when Mahabhava becomes even more condensed, it is called Rudha Mahabhava. And when Rudha Mahabhava becomes even more condensed, it is called Adi, uh, Adi Rudha Mahabhava. And when Adi Rudha Mahabhava becomes even more condensed, it is called as Modanakya Mahabhava. And when Modanakya Mahabhava becomes even more condensed, it is called as Madanakya Mahabhava. And it is said, Madanakya Mahabhava is the highest stage of love. And there is only one person who has reached that stage of love. And that is Radha. When the gopis came to Krishna in the middle of the night, which I was describing some time back, Krishna was so touched by the gopis. He was so touched. He told the gopis, I cannot pay you back. I cannot repay what you have done for me. When you are ready to do anything for Krishna and you are ready, ready to give up your identities, when you are ready to give up your existence literally for, the, for loving Krishna and serving Krishna, this is the level at which Krishna uh, reaches. This is the highest level of love. Krishna is telling the gopis, uh, my dear gopis, I can't repay you for what you have done for me. Imagine God being helpless. God has everything, isn't it? But when God says, I don't have anything to give you, that means you have really conquered God. So Krishna is telling the gopis, for what you have done for me, I can never repay you back. So he felt that all the wealth he had is so useless, so limited that he cannot repay back the gopis for what they have done for him. He's saying, I don't have anything in my treasury to repay you back. And therefore he's thinking, what is it that I can give them? I mean, how can I become rich enough to repay back the gopis for what they have done for me? And that is when Krishna realizes, the only way I can become rich enough is if I steal that love that is in the heart of Radharani, which is called Madanakya Mahabhav. 
if only i reach that stage that i can steal the treasure of love that is in radha's heart maybe i'll be able to repay the gopis back and therefore krishna decides i will beg i will borrow i'll steal but i will take that love that is there in the heart of radha rani which is considered to be the highest level of wealth in this world this is called as madanakya mahabhava dhana this is the highest level of wealth in this material in the material and the spiritual worlds basically and krishna decides i am going to steal that and therefore the day he decides i am going to steal that he really becomes the supreme thief it is explained all the stealing that he has done all his life stealing of butter stealing of clothes stealing of hearts these are all practice sessions for the main robbery that he is going to do and the main robbery that he does is the biggest haste in in krishna's life the biggest haste in krishna's life is he steals the heart of radha the heart in which madanakya maha uh, mahabhava dhana is kept and when he steals that that's when he becomes the biggest thief and you know what i'll end with this when krishna steals don't think he gains although bali maharaj was such a great devotee of the lord he was attached to material possessions and therefore the lord being kind to him appeared in the form of a, of dwarf of a, of a dwarf vamana dev and took away all his material possessions in two tiny steps vamana dev took away all the land all the power the property the wealth opulences education strength everything of bali maharaj in two steps and he asked where should i place the third step bali told the lord please put the third step on my head and vamana dev put the third step on the head of bali maharaj and it is explained that when when the lord put the third step on the head of bali maharaj bali maharaj became a mahajan but don't think that bali sustained any loss he gained the hundred fold in fact he gained the thousand fold hari will pay you back a thousand fold when he steals from you you cannot even conceive how much krishna can give you back uh many people when they come to krishna they feel that krishna is a little dangerous he steals everything away so you know many people feel that what if krishna takes away my wealth what if krishna takes away my job what if krishna takes away my family what if krishna takes away my opulences don't worry when krishna takes anything away from you he gives you back unlimited back and therefore let him take everything let him take your heart let us offer everything to the supreme thief chauragraganyam and when he actually takes everything away from you then he will give you back the amount that you can't even imagine dro maharaj gave him everything and what did krishna give back he gave him the pole star he gave him a planet much much bigger than any other kingdom in the universe so when krishna takes away don't think he takes away he actually takes away to give you something even better so don't hold on to all the stupid simple and really worthless material things that you are possessing is give it give it all up to krishna and krishna will give you much much higher and something much much better thank you very much i wish all of you all a very happy janmashtami and i am praying very intensely that lord krishna steals your heart hare krishna